know, if, if the enemy grabs you, rather than trying to deal with getting rid of the grip, the best thing to do, be that angry cat. Make sure that he doesn't want to keep hold of you. Uh, so we give him a reason to let go. Now, to say when we want to put him on the floor, we can physically put him on the floor, or we can give him a good reason to put himself there. So what we're going to be doing on this next few techniques, we're going to be giving him a good reason to put himself there. So we're starting again from this clinch position using this part. We're talking about again, getting the short shots in. When he releases to stop these, this hand's still a problem. This one is now all over the place, so I want to move away from it. And back, 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 slap, move in, elbow, elbow, take this arm, forearm, forearm. Next thing the cutter does, one, two, three, is he does the Gidam right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit here, and this will bring his head in towards you, the last strike that we did. Because his head is now this close to your chest, it would be a shame not to do something with it, really. <laughs> so, so you're either going to grab the hair, you can put your fingers in the corner of his mouth, you can put your fingers into his nose for hygiene, and everybody's comfort. We'll just take hold of the chin. We're able to work anyway, right? And then you do the gidambra. And now, what we're hoping here, I'm sorry, I'll let you know what we're going to do now, so what I'm hoping is that'll take him down anyway. So as I do the gidambra, it spins him and drops him down here. If he's still got hold of me, again, I'll punch him, drop my knees into him so he lets go, and then I instantly move away. So I'm, I'm cranking the neck, so his body's internal self-defense system, his pain withdrawal reflex, feels this and realizes this is not good. So what he naturally wants to do there is he wants to throw himself to the ground to untwist his neck. Is that okay? So if we just do that one from the counter first, then I want to make a slight detour to just talk about neck cramps generally. But if we just work that first, so we're starting from here again, put your little bits of dirty when he releases, bang, bang, we beat, elbow, elbow, pull, hit, hit. You can do those quickly with control. The next one is slowly with control. All right, so you brought his head towards you, take the chin, take it. Now, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll deal with that problem. If you've still got hold of you here, you need to again give him a reason to let go of you. All right, you know, so if I start kind of drop my knees in here, and bang, at some point, yeah, that's what happened. Okay, and then I can escape. Is that okay? Neck cramp number one. Then we'll do some old Chinese versions and we'll talk about that too. Is that okay? There's a few neck cramps in this counter because they're a good way to put people on the back. As we mentioned, you know, this, we want to have that healthy dose of pessimism. You know, that not every technique is going to work exactly as we expect it to work. If we do the crank, we may not fall over. Um, the kind of solution to that is rather elegant in that it just punches him hard in the head. <laughs> You know, like so much in life, you can solve a lot of problems that way. You see, to you. So from there, as I'm striking from there, here, here, move in, elbow, elbow, back up here, I grab a pull, let's say he takes a big step. So he's you know, managed to get there. He still hasn't fell, you know, but, but he's here. The next thing the cat does, of course, he goes from there, just this. Obviously, depending on your style. So the next thing the cat goes, right, he hasn't dropped, smash, smash. Just punches him down. Because you're in a pretty good position there. No, that's, that's even better than that. <laughs> Not quite that good. So if, I'm sorry, if I've got the crank, then because he's messed, it's hard for him to hit me meaningfully with that back hand until he gets rid of this one. And the cutter's got a plan for that too, by the way, but we'll get to that. So while I'm in this position, it makes sense just to move in here, smash, 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 and drop. Okay, which is exactly what the cutter shows. It goes there and then here. Is that okay? What my friend Steve calls the one-fisted throw, which I always thought was great. So we understand the nature of cutter, right? So, so Funakoshi Vuitton was made to practice these forms, the three nahanji, uh, for the first nine, ten years of his training, right? So you can, during that time, it's unlikely just to be walking back and forth. Right? The, the applications become uh, key. And, and of course, when we're looking at these, uh, the applications of it, we need to remember it's not just about saying, here's a move. What it's really doing is saying, here's a move to illustrate a concept. That, that's, that's the idea. So when it's showing a neck crank, it's not saying this is the only neck crank in existence. It's saying this is a good example of a neck crank, and from this you can understand all neck cranks. Is that okay? This is a good throw, and from this you can understand all throws. Because the principles are consistent, even though the method varies. And again, Funakoshi talks about this, you know, he says that there, he says through uh, mastery of one technique, you will realize it's close relationship to all of the techniques. If you've got one good kick, you understand how kicks work. If you've got one good throw, you understand how throws work. So rather than that, try to include every single neck crank, and by the way, wouldn't that be a cool counter if it did? <laughs> you know, what it does is, in most of them go, here's one or two examples, you get the idea, these are the limitations of the neck, now go play. So what I'd like to do, just for a moment, we'll just play. And the ones I want to play with are just two techniques from the Babishi. Right? So the Babishi is this old Chinese text that the old masters are regarding to be very important. There's two key neck cramps in the Babishi. Uh, Emperor holds a giant egg is the name of one of them. And beautiful lady combs her hair is the name of the other one. Names are very cool, isn't it, the Babishi? 
Um, so, you all experienced people don't care how you get there, so just something. Yeah, that's it. So here, get hold of the head, but you've got that take hold of the, the back of his head here and the tip of his cheek. Right? Because they're the two furthest points away from the neck. It's what we were doing a one-handed version of a second ago. When you've got that from there, you twist. Now at this point, I am very much in charge. In fact, one could say I was the emperor. <laughs> uh, and the thing I'm holding has a pointy end and a round end, and I've got hold of the two ends. So one could say that was an egg or any stage shape. So when I go here, that is again that holds a giant egg. Is that okay? The beautiful lady combs her hair while it's pretty bad on the neck, so you've just got to be careful. And so again, same kind of thing. What the, you've got underneath here, this one. In the Mabishi, it's grabbing the hair at the back, which just shows you all know, the, the, the top of the thing, it's grabbing it. If the hair's not there to grab, we're still grabbing the same point, but instead of twisting now, we're doing this, we're tilting. Okay? Make sure you slow your partner's fall like I did. I've got hold of him just before he hit, right? And take the pressure off so they don't land in the bridge. Bad on the neck, you know what I mean? And obviously bad for the head as well. So you've got two general neck cramps there. There you two key you've got. Emperor holds a giant neck. Okay? You can use that as a takedown or a position of a choke to strangle. And the other one you've got again, you've got from there, beautiful lady in her head. Okay? <laughs> Another name for that one, this isn't an ancient Chinese name, but I've heard it and I like it, is the alien. Right? You know, I've seen the movie. <laughs> Jumps on his face. So, so the alien was another hurt that I actually prefer that one. Yeah, but, but either one of them, so you're tilting the head. Once the head gets tilted, because it's the heaviest part of your body from the size, where the head tends to go, the body tends to fall. And the fact that the neck is getting bent in directions your body doesn't like tri triggers your nervous system. It's not even your brain. It triggers your nervous system to take corrective action to protect, to protect against those potential problems. He said, okay, so we push here and the throw themselves backwards, you twist to spin themselves around. Okay? So I'll keep going with those, okay? So we just <laughs> briefly detouring from the counter by looking at some common principles. You just mentioned, right? You've got this um, movement from the Nyanwe, and the are straight through the full thing. So I've gone here, put my knee straight in the draw, and I strike it here, moves through, I've done there, take hold of this hand. Pull there, so you've got this bit, then again you pull across, you bring the knee in. So we taught him once he's there, I've got this knee straight in his spine. So that's a what if he doesn't drop. As, as we talked about when we were looking at uh, a knee down before, uh, sorry, showdown before, we said if we got to here, well, what if he didn't drop or we punched him? Huh? But as we just talked about, you've got the option of putting a knee in there too. We don't really find that until the, the, the knee down uh, version. So going back to the knee down version, so I've got here, again, strike from there, moves across, go through here. Take the head and put the knee towards his spine. Now, again, if he doesn't fall at this point, you know, when I'm basically even more, I could go straight back to shoulder and hit it. Again, as we joked about, it's not Ghostbusters, you are allowed across the streams. You can mix the two, you can go from all the other. But one of the other options that I've got from here, which is kind of fun, is the elbow. Now, different styles uh, do different elbows. So some go here and some go here. Uh, 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 now, and again, people will argue about which one's right, but it just depends where his head is. So if I spun him round from there and he's here, well what option one is I can do what Shodan tells me to do and I can punch him. I can also knee into his spine. If he's where he's there, so he's fairly upright, from there I can go smash and I can put the elbow in again. That makes sense, you whip him round with the elbow. If when I've done it, it the, 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 the spine is going to bend here, I can do the elbow again, but I can come over the top and downwards. Now, so the advantage of doing it that way as well is because the elbow's gone back this way, it's continuous to come back over the top from there. Whereas if I went here and went lift, drop, there's a dead beat in there. Does that make sense? You know, so I've got stop moving, lift, drop. Whereas if I go from there, it's one continuous movement, so it's slightly quicker. Not that it really matters because you're in a dominant position. But I'm obviously not going to do this because you've seen my control can be a little bit dubious. <laughs> so, 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 but, but I would be able to face with that for practice, you can help me on his chest. It's one of these ones, it strikes that people doubt the efficiency of it. Like this, this is kind of, you know, he's whipping elbow here, it's a very strong, very strong strike. Right, so, um, if I've if I got, got it here from there, and he's there, bang, from there, that will definitely finish him off. That was actually fairly good control, I thought bone, but only just. Um, is everyone okay with that idea? Just how effective would it be to use your right elbow as opposed to your left? Either. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think about it. I think the, the only reason, because of the way you've cracked, this elbow's back. So, so that falling through which just seems quite natural to do. But if you, if you were there and you went this way instead, um, there's no reason why you couldn't get from there again, bang, this way would work just as well. Yeah. It'd be like a, a smidgen slower, but it would be fine. 
So I, I think the ultimate test of all of that is, I always tell my students, would he care? So, so if you went like, do you ever with this arm or that arm? Well, it's not like he's going to go, oh, I'd rather have that one, because they're both horrific, right? You know, he's looking up at the ceiling, and the last thing he sees before everything goes black is your elbow coming down the wood. So, uh, so if he doesn't care, we shouldn't care. So you can, uh, in this case, I think you can do it with either. It's just whichever one he feels most appropriate. But it ultimately determines where he is. So I could hit him like we've done from either cat. If I bent him and he's still fairly up, he can come round. If I pulled him and he's there, I get to smash him straight down from there with a dropping out. Is that okay? And that's why you see different elbows and different styles. And it would be annoying if the cat had tried to show every single possible variation, right? That would bug the life out of you. you know, if you got to your cat and it went, well, it could be anywhere, really, couldn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, well, let's miss through every possibility just in case. So the cat just goes and smash it. And then what you do is, wherever his head happens to be, you would help him whatever you want to do. So there'd be nothing wrong. You know, if you were there and you were there, 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 that's okay. It's not what the cat does, but in principle it's still the same. You just use an elbow to finish the job off. And essentially what that is, is remember we did a neck crank before, and when it didn't work, we finished it with a hit. And what are we doing here? We're doing a neck crank here, it doesn't work, we're finishing it with a hit. That's what I'm saying, the Ninan and Sandan version, uh, uh, just variations on the themes of things that have already been introduced by shoulder. Okay, the original one, the first one. Is everyone okay to give that a go? I've got that whipping elbow's great for it, so but just be careful with it, right? <laughs>